With the inverse function, y equals k over x, where k is a number, why do we get this weird shape when we graph it? I'll use this equation as an example, y equals 10 over x, and what I'm going to do is start filling in a table of values. I'm going to skip x equals 0 for now, and I'm going to do this quite quickly because you don't have to see me show the work to know that if x equals 1 and I plug that in, I'm getting y equals 10 divided by 1. But 10 divided by 1 is 10, so that's quite an easy one to put in. y equals 10 divided by 2 is 5. y equals 10 divided by 5 is 2. y equals 10 divided by 10 is 1. Those points were fast to do. I chose this point 3.5 because I want an extra point that shows the middle of this curve so we can understand the curve a little better. If you plug 3.5 into this equation, you're going 10 divided by 3.5 and you get y equals 2.86, which was rounded. When we graph these, the point 110 is going right here. 2, 5 is going here, 5, 2 is going here, 10, 1 is going here. I've graphed these four points. 3.5, 2.86 is landing around here. And what we're having happen is this curve that swings around this way. And what's happening at both ends of the curve is interesting because if I choose numbers smaller than 1 but greater than 0, I'm going to get bigger and bigger answers. And what that means is this curve is going to keep on approaching the y-axis, but it's never going to touch it. And the reason it's never going to touch it is this point right here. If x is 0, I have y equals 10 divided by 0. And if you try that in your calculator, you will get an error. And we know in math we can't divide by 0. Error means undefined. The answer to this is undefined, which means there is no answer. That's why this side of the curve doesn't touch the, the y-axis. And then there's this point way down here where y equals to 0. To show you what happens with that, I'll take my equation, and I'm going to isolate the x. It was useful to have the y isolated for all of these points because it was an x value we were plugging in. To isolate the x in this equation, I'm going to start by multiplying both sides by x. These cancel, so I have xy equals 10. But the x still isn't isolated, I have to divide both sides by y. These cancel, now my x is isolated, and I have x equals 10 divided by y. Very similar to the original equation. And if I plug y equals 0 into this, I'm dividing by 0 again, I'm going to get an undefined answer. I'm going to get error in my calculator. And that's why on this other section of the curve, the curve approaches the x-axis but never touches it. That's the reason for this weird shape. All inverse functions will have this shape. This is a very simple one. It's possible to move that shape around on the coordinate plane by adding other parameters to this function. But in the secondary three, algebraic modeling course that I'm making this video for, we only use this basic form of the function. And once you understand why it makes that shape, it's easier to remember how to work with it.